Carlos, let's break this down. Uh, what, what are the important issues that might get resolved out of this? These things are, are, are always broad and always grand, but uh, a lot of times things get bogged down afterwards. You know, in the, in the short term, the, uh, the achievement is relationships. Uh, President Biden, President AMLO, they have a better relationship now than they did before. But in terms of concrete outcomes, I don't expect any. Uh, I would hope that with this migration discussion that that will start a process that may become very effective in five or seven or ten years. But in the immediate term, there's not much. I mean, to, to say we, we encourage migrants to take legal pathways, what are those legal pathways? It, it is very premature. So, um, and I think we also have to recognize that we're dealing with a very different kind of Mexican president. He He's taking us back to uh, sort of left-wing populism. And the one thing that he cannot do is uh, show or give the impression that he's kowtowing to the U.S., that he's somehow being pushed around by the U.S. So uh, it's very delicate. And I think it also goes back to Central America. It goes back to the Caribbean. So this is bigger than the Mexican border. Um, and, and, and we have to get more countries involved. More countries? What, what country? You mean South? Well, of, Central South America, Mexico? Cuba, Central America. This is where the, the, the migrants are coming from. Um, but there was very little agreed to. You know, this idea of uh, recruiting centers in Mexico and in other countries where uh, a, a private sector can go as a though a recruiting agency and say, I need these skills please provide me these people. That's an idea that's been around for quite a while, and I think it has potential. Um, but, you know, they talked about a website. That's great. It's a great start, but what else? There needs to be an infrastructure, an architecture, to be able to pull this off, and that's not going to happen overnight. But I think that is a potential solution, which requires cooperation, collaboration, things that haven't been in vogue up in the last uh, several years. Yeah, I, I think if you even look back to the original kind of goals of, of NAFTA, when you start thinking through auto production, for example, I mean, there's some big questions about auto rules of origin. So it feels like in a lot of ways we're dealing with issues that are more than 20 years old. Yeah, and, you know, we knew from, from the time the USMCA was signed, everyone knew that uh, autos were going to be a problem. The, the, the way the rules of origin are written, um, and to be able to manage and monitor that is close to impossible, and that's what we're seeing now, uh, that controlling this 40 percent of local content is just difficult to monitor, to supervise. Um, and Canada has a problem with that. Mexico has a problem with that. So they both have a problem with the U.S. Each country has a problem with something the other country is doing, and that's why a lot of these things become a circular argument. Um, fentanyl was interesting that very little came out of drug smuggling in the in the release. Yeah. And this is also a circular argument. Well, you want me to stop uh, the cartels? Why don't you stop consumption and stop sending us weapons? And it just goes around and around.